Welcome into our Charter Road Hospitality Studios here at the Town Place Suites here in Oxford, Mississippi, located right across from the Oxford Conference Center. It's Hotty Toddy Hotline, and I'm your host, Browning Stubbs, and today we got a fantastic show planned for you because the Ole Miss baseball team, the Ole Miss Diamond Revs, they're playing good ball right now, winning these weekend series over the Florida Gators at Swayze Field. Ole Miss took two of three from the Mighty Gators, and we'll talk about that in the show. Also, the Chancellor of the University of Mississippi, Dan Jones, is out as Chancellor, so we'll have much more on kind of why that happened as well. And also, the Ole Miss basketball team, call it March Sadness. It's no longer March Madness in Oxford because Ole Miss is elim- they're eliminated from the NCAA tournament after falling to the hands of the Xavier Musketeers. But on the other hand, the women's basketball team, they're playing well. They just won their second game of the NIT, and they're going on to the third round where Bad Insel will face his father for the third time in his young career as, as the coach of the Rebels. He'll take on Middle Tennessee State this week. We'll talk about all of that in the show this week. And if you want to get in touch with the show, call 1 800 621 0042. That's the toll free number. And find us on Facebook at Hottie Toddy Hotline and Twitter at Hottie Toddy Hotline. Stick with us. We got a big show coming up this week for you on Hotty Toddy Hotline. And welcome back into Hotty Toddy Hotline. I'm your host, Browning Stubbs. Let's get the show off today with some basketball. The Ole Miss, Ole Miss men's basketball season, unfortunately, comes to an end after losing in the second round of the NCAA tournament to the Xavier Musketeers, 76-57. But I guess before we talk about the Xavier game, I think it's it's I think we owe it to the Rebels to kind of talk about what happened in Dayton, Ohio, which was last Tuesday, where Ole Miss they went into the game in the first four in Dayton as underdogs, and they played they played BYU, who had some great great shooters, Tyler Hawes, Kyle Collinsworth on that team, and a lot of experts were picking BYU. No one was was, was really picking. Ole Miss, and for for good reason, you know. They lost four out of five games going into the tournament, and Ole Miss, they really showed no reason that they could win that game. But overall, uh, Ole Miss, what happened was first half, they were down by 17 at halftime, and a, a lot of people thought that it, it was over for Ole Miss because guys aren't making shots. Jarvis Summers, you know, missed 10 shots in the first half. But – Second half, I don't know what was said in the locker room, but Andy Kennedy, I think he he told them, guys, look, we're in the tournament, we're we're down 17, but anything can happen. On that floor in Dayton, a few years back, back in 2011, BYU was on that same court, down 25 to Iona in the first half. Well, they came to rally and win that game. So Ole Miss, they had the same mindset. So in the second half, Ole Miss just dominates. And what they did was they got the ball inside. They got the ball inside to MJ Rett. And MJ Rett had a career game for Ole Miss. And he was he was a force blocking shots, getting alley oops. I mean, he was all over the place. Rett finished the game with twenty points and had three blocks. Stephon Moody was back to his normal self. Shot ten of eighteen. That's one of the best shooting games he's played in a while. And he scored twenty six points for the Rebs, made five threes. Dished out five assists. Jarvis Summers got some momentum in the second half as well. He got a double double in the game, eleven points, ten assists, and it was honestly the one of the most exciting basketball games ever for Ole Miss. It was just their fifth tournament win all time, and it was really a special game, and and everyone was happy, and it was just it was great to see Ole Miss represent the university and and the SEC by winning a game. It was really a a testament to the hard work that they put in this year. And and though Andy Kennedy, he gets criticized for his his coaching strategies because he, he likes to recruit shot blockers, but he's he's kind of he's kind of been, uh, n- I guess, not consistent in the postseason. But it was good for Andy Kennedy and big that Ole Miss got the win. However, against Xavier, it was a different story. Xavier was just really 
they were too big for Ole Miss, I think. And then the problem with, in that game was MJ Rhett, the X factor against, against BYU, was in foul trouble. And Matt Stainbrook, the big guy with the goggles that he wore, number 40 for Xavier, he dominated Ole Miss. Scores 20 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Not much Ole Miss could do. They were trailing 24 to 36 at halftime. And the second half, I mean, it seemed like whenever Ole Miss was making a run, Xavier would just charge right back and make make a run of their own. And and really, the closest that Ole Miss got in that second half was they they got it to a 12 point game with. 14 minutes, and then they got it to 13 with 10 minutes left. So really, uh, they – and then oh, then now I, I see they got it to 11 with eight minutes left. So, I mean, they tried to get back in the game, but, you know, Xavier would just keep – they just kept responding and playing good basketball. So it was it was a, a tough loss for Ole Miss, but really they just get outmatched. And Xavier, I mean, honestly, they play one of their best games of the season because they only went 9-9 nine nine in the Big East. The Big East not a major conference anymore. And it was kind of shocking that they they earned a sixth seed in the tournament, but nonetheless, Ole Miss put up a, a good fight. But we look at the the big picture of it now. Ole Miss they'll be losing five seniors, and those five seniors from MJ Rep, Jarvis Summers, Ladarius White, and Terrence Smith, Aaron Jones, all those guys really were the the backbone of this team because their leadership was huge. And though Jarvis had a, a bad shooting year, you know, Jarvis Summers, just a year away from averaging 70 points per game on 48% shooting, just averages 12 points per game and 33% shooting this year. So he had a bad year. But, you know, he had help from from some of the other seniors. It was good that MJ Rett emerged towards the end of the season as well. So Ole Miss, you know, unfortunately they fall and their season is over. But Coach Kennedy said it himself, if – if you guys thought we'd win an NCAA tournament game, I'd, I'd call you crazy because no one was predicting Ole Miss to make the tournament. And it was truly it was, it was truly special that, that they were able to overcome all the odds and make make the NCAA tournament. It was it was really uh, a special season. But heading into next year, Jarvis Summers is gone, so you you got to have a new point guard. Who will it be? We don't know yet. I mean, will Ole Miss slide Stephon Moody over to the point guard? It's unlikely because you know he's got he got a lot of his buckets at shooting guard, but overall they're going to have to retool their offense. You know, some big guys will have to step up. Sebastian Saez and Dwight Colby will be will be good factors for next year, but a point guard is going to be important. But I think Ole Miss has sent a message to recruits: after winning a tournament game, you know, having a good season, you can win here in Oxford. And with the new pavilion at Ole Miss coming to town, I mean, it's got to be an attractive place for recruits. So I, I think there's momentum going into next season, and there's rumors that Ole Miss could land five-star guard Malik Newman, who would be the the, the, the most precious rec- recruit Ole Miss basketball has ever received. He's five-star guard from Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi. But, you know, he's also considering schools like Kentucky and Duke as well. So we'll see what happens with that, but overall, good season for Ole Miss basketball. They finished twenty-one and thirteen. They go eleven and seven in the SEC, and most importantly, they won an NCAA tournament game. They won a postseason game. The football team did not, so that's that's good for Ole Miss basketball. Well, that wraps up the Ole Miss men's basketball discussion for this week's show. But we're gonna talk some Ole Miss baseball later in the show, and the Ole Miss, the Diamond Rebels, they picked up a big series win over the Florida Gators. So we'll talk much more about that coming up on Honey Tut Hotline. And welcome back into Honey Tut Hotline. Ole Miss baseball. What a weekend for the Rebels. They take two or three from the top-ranked team in the nation, the Florida Gators. Florida had just lost one game going into the SEC season, you know, before taking on Ole Miss. And Ole Miss, they, boy, have they had, you know, one of the toughest schedules in the country. I mean, they played LSU last weekend in the three-game series, who was then number one at the time. And then before that, played some, you know, non-conference games against UCF and Louisville. So this team has been tested. And the record is 13-10 and 10 on the season. And, the, and though they have 
had some slip ups you know, against William and Mary and Wright State and Stetson. You know, some head shaky losses there, but you know they they've had some other non conference tough games and you know thirteen ten certainly it's a record that is definitely underachieving. But when you start conference play three and three against the two best teams, you know, frankly, in the Southeastern Conference in Kentucky, or excuse me, not Kentucky, but in LSU and Florida, that's that's not a bad start, you know, for for a team that uh, for a team that you know is coming off an Omaha appearance and everything. So that's so that's 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 big news. All right, now let's talk about actually what happened in the series. You know, they they played the first game and took down the Gators 4-1, to one, and the pitching of Christian Trent was huge. Christian Trent responds for Ole Miss after losing his first game ever as a Rebel back in Baton Rouge last weekend. But Trent, I mean, he was spectacular in, in this game. Trent, he retired the first eight batters he faced, which is very impressive. And he went 4.1 innings in, you know, before allowing his first hit, which, which was a single by Florida. And overall in the game, he allowed one run on three hits with a walk and three strikeouts. He pitched 6.1 innings. And then Scott Weathersby closed it out for Ole Miss, and he allowed just one run on three hits. So Ole Miss really took care of the Florida Gators, and Sykes Orvis was also huge in this one. He had two hits, three RBIs, and guess what? Another home run for, I guess that they call him the, the mustache man now because he's got a really funky mustache going on. Second game, which was the first of a double header on Saturday, was critical as well. Ole Miss takes this one five to two over the Florida Gators. Ole Miss was spectacular again, and guess who hit another home run? Sykes Orvis. Sykes Orvis went, got two hits in this one, four RBIs, and another home run. I mean, he was really spectacular, and Sykes Orvis that that was his sixth home run that he hit of the game, and the pitching was also big in that one as Brady Bramlett, he earned the win, improving to 3-1 and one on the season. He went six innings strong, only giving up two runs. One was earned on six hits with two walks and six strikeouts. I mean, that's strong. So through the first two games, it's safe to say Ole Miss, they have their their pitchers for next for this season with Christian Trent being the, the series opener starter and then Brady Bramlett at number two. Now, the third game of the series didn't go so hot for Ole Miss as Florida took that one 8-3. And Will Stokes, the freshman right-hander, made his first start of his career, giving up five runs on seven hits with a walk and a strikeout in 2.2 innings. Junior right-hander Drake Robinson took his place and worked three innings of relief, and he only limited Florida to two runs on two hits. Sam Smith also, you know, Sam Smith is a guy who's kind of been on the outside, not playing good baseball right now, or not not really pitching good baseball right now, shall I say. He came in 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 relief, and he gave up a run and scattered three hits with with a strikeout in 2.1 innings of work. And Earl Robinson had an RBI double in the game as well. So really just uh, overall – You'll take two or three from the top-ranked team in the nation before you start playing. So that's that's good for Ole Miss baseball. Ole Miss baseball, they got to find that third starter, though. You know, whether it, it's it's going to be the freshman who started Sunday's game, Will Stokes, or if if Sam Smith can get some kind of momentum, you know that that remains to be seen. But they got to find that starter. I mean, it is critical that that it happens. You know. Evan Anderson, you know, he's he's appeared in a lot of games too. You know, what's going to happen with him? If Ole Miss can find that third starter, then I think that they're going to do very well in the Southeastern Conference this year. But let's look ahead to their upcoming schedule this week as they will have a double header on Tuesday against UAB, first game at 11 a.m. and the second game at 2 p.m. So another another tough challenge against UAB, who's 13-9, and nine on the season, but then the big game comes against the Arkansas Razorbacks that will be this weekend in Fayetteville beginning on Friday night. The first pitch on that one will be at 6.30 
p.m. Arkansas in Fable on the season. They're they're you know an upcoming they're they're an up and coming program for sure in the, in the southeastern conference. Arkansas on on the season really I mean they've they've had their ups and downs too, but they're they're a team that is you know could give Ole Miss trouble. You know, and they're they actually uh, played a, a three game series last week against LSU, and they won one of the three in that one. So Arkansas, you know, got swept by Vanderbilt the weekend before that. But you know, it's going to be certainly a an interesting series because it's it's the second road series of the season. Can Ole Miss go in there? You know, they they were a very good road team last year. Can Ole Miss you know win that series? I think that's going to be critical. Sykes Orvis, it's good he's playing good baseball because for the season he really wasn't he really wasn't you know there you know he, I feel like he lost a step but he's kind of got it back hitting two runs over the weekend for the Rebels and hopefully Ole Miss will take care of a business this coming week. All right, well that wraps it up for our baseball discussion. Now we're we're going to go into a little more about the Ole Miss women's basketball team who will be playing in the. NIT for the third round after picking up two wins last week. We'll talk much more about that coming up on Hotty Toddy Hotline. And welcome back into Hotty Toddy Hotline. And probably the biggest news that broke actually last Friday, right before the weekend, was the announcement that Dan Jones, the chancellor of the University of Mississippi, would be forced out of his position of chancellor. And Chris Kiefer wrote a nice piece from the Daily Journal explaining the decision about what happened with Dan Jones. But Dan Jones, you know, of course, returned to Ole Miss just a week after four months of of cancer treatment. And actually, he found out on his birthday that he was going to be removed from Chancellor at Ole Miss. And it was announced that his contract was not renewed by the state college board and the IHL elected or the IHL commissioner Jim Borsage later confirmed a statement that Jones would not be retained. His contract earns or ends on September fourteenth. And IHL is, is what, what they call it, the Institution of Higher Learning Commissioner. That's that's something that's them they made the decision about it. But overall, Dan Jones, you know, so, some things that he's done as chancellor. He led the twenty three thousand student university since two thousand nine after previously heading the UM Medical Center in Jackson. Jones said that he was disappointed of the news, and there's been you know several disagreements about it, and there's actually. I think on Wednesday of this week, there's supposed to be over 1,000 people that are signed up to, I guess, have a a rally to save Dan Jones, and then that's going to be Wednesday on, on campus. Yes, on campus over the weekend, they're making signs. So th- these are some of the students. But overall, just from from wh- what some of the reports are saying, the major disagreement became in the medical department about how things are being run at Ole Miss. I, I can't speak too much of it, but but that's that's what's going on. And there's going to be meetings this week. There's actually one in Jackson about the IHL's decision, and they're they're explaining why he was released. And and overall, the the votes were seven in favor of removing him, and two were against it. And that, so that's that's what's going on with Dan Jones and. And how this relates to Ole Miss sports, well, some members of the athletic department shared their thoughts on on Twitter, and Ross Burek tweeted, Three years ago today, Dan Jones gave us a chance to lead athletics and be a part of the Ole Miss family. Forever grateful for his leadership. And to send a second tweet, Dan Jones is a great leader in higher education and gave his heart and soul to Ole Miss. Everyone in our athletics program will miss him the head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. Hugh Freeze tweets, three years ago, Dan Jones gave us the chance to lead Rebel football and be part of the Ole Miss family. Forever grateful for his leadership. 
And then another tweet, Dan Jones is a great leader in higher education and gave his heart and soul to Ole Miss. Everyone in our athletics program will miss him. So some interesting news about this over the the weekend. And, you know, what's what's crazy about this is it's it's kind of shocking that he was that he was i guess let go you know when he just got back from being in you know where he had cancer treatment so i, I guess that's kind of the i guess the timing of it is a little i don't want to say questionable but a little interesting to say the least and and i you know j- just from reading some reports this has kind of been in the, in the making for for a a few months and uh, I I don't think there's been a statement released from the medical program as far as what their opinions on are. But it's for the most part, it's not a favorable decision around campus as far as students go. But uh, but Dan Jones, you know, in his time as chancellor, he made some decisions and and he ushered the school away from symbols he saw as hurtful to some. And that led the that led Ole Miss to alter the ending of the popular from Dixie with Love song after students chanted the South will rise again during its original closing. So there's, you know, certainly some traditions that Jones took away, but overall under his leadership, admissions were up. And I I actually reported on a story last fall about the uh, when Ole Miss beat Alabama in football, actually the week the week after that, there were there were a big rise in, in applicants for for next for this coming year's school year. There are over a thousand kids. So I, with with Jones's leadership of the a- athletic program, I I really can't speak from an, an academic standpoint. But as far as as far as athletics, I think he did a great job of of leading of leading the the football program. You know, him being over Ross Bjork and he freeze, you know they they've done a great job, and it's brought much more excitement to Oxford than the last couple of years of the Pete Boone and Houston Nut era for sure. And then you know just mentioned the Ole Miss basketball team, you know they're having success as well. So we w- want to wish Dan Jones well, and hopefully he has a good recovery. Uh, you know even though he's been out of the hospital, you know his his head is, is still shaved. So hopefully. He can recover and be all right. But don't know about when they'll appoint a new chancellor, but I, I guess that will be coming up in the in the upcoming months for sure. But overall, I mean, there were just a lot of changes that Jones made, and, and I guess IHL overall just, just wasn't in favor of it. Well, that, that kind of wraps up our, I guess you could say, news topic of Hotty Toddy Hotline. For the week, but coming up, how about those those Lady Rebs, the Ole Miss men, women's basketball team? They are on the map and still playing ball as they hosted Georgia Tech over the weekend, and we'll have much more on who they'll play next and and where the Rebels are headed. Stay with us on Honey Tide Hotline. <laughs> And welcome back into Hotty Toddy Hotline. I'm your host, Browning Stubbs, and one of our best friends of the show, that's Matt Insel. Matt Insel is the head coach of the Ole Miss women's basketball team, and Insel, he is feeling pretty good right now because his team, they just advanced past the second round of the women's NIT last week. They won their opening round game against UT Martin, and what was kind of ironic about that game was one of Matt's former players, Mo Jackson, or I guess you call her Monique Jackson, plays for UT Martin, and it was a good game. So let's, let's talk about the first game against UT Martin. Ole Miss won that one in Tad Smith Coliseum, 80-70. to Kelsey Briggs, the, the really impressive freshman guard, put up 19 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists, and... She's from she's from Memphis. I I've I actually saw her play in high school and I think she's going to be a very very good uh player for Ole Miss down the road, but overall Ole Miss won its first postseason game since the 08-09 season 
and it was a, a big game. Now, let's talk about the big game that happened over the weekend against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was a team that that really was a, a you know a, a team that honestly was close towards the NCAA tournament, but they they defeated Duke women's basketball this year. And Duke women's basketball, they're always a good team. I, I believe they're a two seed right now. So it was big that Ole Miss was able to upset the Yellow Jackets and Tia Fowler in likely her final game as – or not final game, but final home game, shall we say, as an Ole Miss Rebel really did it big. I mean, she scored 24 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists. She was all over the place. Tia – was spectacular. And Matt Ensel said after the game, quote, what a great win for our program. I keep saying it, but in year two of our process, not a lot of people thought we would be here at this point. Georgia Tech is a very good basketball team, and they have one of the best players in the country on their team. I was really proud of the way we came out with energy and how we are, we, we got going from the tip. I'm really proud of every one of our basketball players. We're a growing team. We're getting better each and every day. What a great team win over a really impressive Georgia Tech basketball team. Hey, they're doing things here in Oxford for the Ole Miss women's basketball team. Matt Ansel, he's leading that, that team to greater heights. And with the win, the Rebels advance to the Sweet 16 of the postseason WNIT, where Ansel will face his father, Rick Ansel, and this will be the third meeting that the Ensel father and son combination have played against against each other. Ensel, uh, Rick Ensel is the head coach of Middle Tennessee State, in case you guys forgot. The two teams met back on November 23rd in Oxford, where the Blue Raiders took that one 71-65. So, overall, it's it's going to be a tough challenge to, 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 take, to take down his father, you know, they, uh, in the past, you know, they've been an NCAA tournament team, but had a, l- a little bit of a down year this year. But, you know, Tia Fowleru, you know, she knows that each of these final games could be her last. But, but she picked up her 14th double-double of the season against Georgia Tech, which was the 34th of her career. So she's going to go down playing really good basketball against MTSU and that game will be on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central, which will be in Murfreesboro, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And when on the on the rematch between the, the two teams, Ansel said, it's going to be a big crowd. Everyone in the middle of Tennessee area is going to be there. I think they will bring a big crowd, and their fans are really excited about it. We're going to go down there and play basketball. That is just what we do. We have played in front of big crowds, and we'll be ready to go. So there's a confidence level there for Ansel, you know, taking on his father. I mean, it's it's really one of the, I I, I think one of the most compelling storylines in the NCAA for women's basketball. I mean, when you have an up and coming coach like Ansel for uh, for Ole Miss, who really learned everything in his life about basketball from his father Rick. I mean, Rick helped him. Coach AAU teams. I mean, he's really taught him everything about how to recruit, how to coach, you know, how to learn your X's and O's, and it's been special. And it's it's going to be a a good game. But let's hope that Matt can finally get that win against his father, which I'm I'm sure that, that that's what he he dreams about when he sleeps. So it's going to be a good good match. A reminder that matchup set for Thursday at 7 p.m. And just some other news about. The Ole Miss women's basketball team, if you guys haven't heard in the last week or so. But Tia Fowler was named unanimous AP first team all SEC selection for this past basketball season. Fowler was spectacular on, on the season. She averaged another double double, 14.7 points and 10.3 rebounds first game. And is the first player to lead the SEC in rebounding in back to back years since. LSU Sylvia Fowles back from 2006, 2007, and 2007 to set 2008. And she's also the first to average a double figure rebound since George's Portia Phillips in 2011. It's the first to average a double double since 2011. So shout out to Tia Fowler and 
you know, and I, I think she's got the strength, and I think she's going to try to play professional basketball. You know, whether that's in the WNBA or overseas remains to be seen, but that's big for Tia, and uh, she she did a lot for this program. And in in her final year, I mean, I mean, certainly she wanted to make the she wanted to make the NCAA tournament, but you know, to to get some postseason experience in the NIT, that is fantastic. Where she's won two games, so that's. You know, that's something that hasn't happened since she's been here. So that's good for Tia. All right, well, that wraps up our Ole Miss women's basketball discussion. But coming up, we're going to wrap up the show with talking about what's ahead this week in Ole Miss sports and much, much more here on Hotty Toddy Hotline. Stay with us. We will be right back. And welcome back in to our Trotter Road Hospitality Studios here at Town Place Suites or calls from the Oxford Conference Center. I mentioned we were here earlier, but there's also some good properties of Oxford, of uh, in Oxford, of Charter Road Hospitality that you don't want to miss. And there's the Hampton Inn located at 110 Heritage Drive, which is kind of over on Jackson Avenue. And it's a great place. I've stayed there. We've done the show there before. They're very nice to us. I mean, you don't want to miss out on the free breakfast from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and free coffee, which that's that's what I like. Give them a call at 662-232-2442, and also. Holiday Inn Express right across the hill from the Anthony Inn over on Jackson. 112 Heritage Drive. Give them a call. 662-236-2500. And lastly, the last Charter Road Hospitality property is right across the road from where we are today at the Hampton Inn, 103 Ed Perry Boulevard. Give them a call. 662-234-5535. And now let's talk about what's coming up this week in Ole Miss sports. The big sport that we just we talked about in our last segment was women's basketball. Though they don't have a home game, but they'll have a road game on Thursday at Middle Tennessee State. And baseball. They're in action for a doubleheader on Tuesday against the UAB Blazers. And uh, First game of the doubleheader is set for Tuesday at an uh, early start there, 11 a.m., and baseball will conclude on Tuesday with a 2 p.m. game against the Blazers again. But then Ole Miss, the baseball team, they head into a big weekend series against the Arkansas Razorbacks, which will start on a Friday at 6.30 p.m. Saturday's game will be at 6 p.m., and Sunday's game will be at 2.05, a matinee Sunday afternoon Baseball game in Fayetteville. That's what's going on with baseball. And and also the Ole Miss tennis team, they had a good weekend over the series as they as they defeated the Florida Gators. That was a, a big win as, as they shut out number 15 Florida. Nick Schultz clinches win at number one singles. Uh, so Nick Schultz was, again, you know, it, it was good, good that he – came back this season as he's been really good for Ole Miss, who's, you know, number 13 in the country and, and everything. So it's it's good that Ole Miss has a good tennis program, you know, because we, you know, we really haven't seen that in the past. But Schultz, he wins his first set 6-3, to three, his second set 6-3, and his third set 6 nothing. So that's good for Schultz and singles and the Ole Miss tennis team. The Ole Miss tennis team, they will be back in action with a road game in Starkville against Mississippi State on Wednesday at 3 p.m. It's it's not that far of a drive, you know, only an hour and a half to Starkville. So if you want to go up there, go cheer on the Ole Miss tennis team. Also, there's some more Ole Miss sports coming up this week with women's golf. They, they're playing in the Sanford Intercollegiate Tournament in Hoover, Alabama on Tuesday. Also, softball, they're in action. The Ole Miss softball team, they actually had a, a really fun weekend as well as Ole Miss won their the they won the season or not the season, but the weekend series over Mississippi State, who was ranked number twenty four in the country. So that's that's big for the Rebels and you know, they actually Tallied 15 two-out RBIs, and it was an, an awesome series win, and it was 
actually Mike Smith, the new head coach, it was he picked up his first Southeastern Conference victory and series win with with the win over Mississippi State. But softball, they're also back in action as they will they will hit the, the field on Wednesday with a home game against Mississippi Valley State. That's a 6 p.m. first pitch. And, yeah, but overall, the Ole Miss Athletics, I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a big week. And then tennis is back in action with a home game against LSU on Friday. And also softball will be traveling to Fayetteville also. So you got Ole Miss, Ole Miss baseball and Ole Miss softball both in Fayetteville over the weekend. So a very busy week for Ole Miss sports and, you know, with basketball over, it's you know come down to the final stretch here. So hopefully, the the baseball team can you know get back to the NCAA tournament, maybe make a run towards Omaha. I you know you, you know the tennis team is going to be doing really well as well. So, but as far as basketball, Ole Miss their season is done after losing to Xavier. But the SEC really did not have. That great of a showing in the NCAA tournament with LSU, they they lost in the first round to NC State, and they missed their last six free throws in that one. LSU kind of choked that one away, honestly. And then the Georgia Bulldogs had a, a, a tough game against Michigan State. They weren't able to pull that one off. And the Arkansas Razorbacks, they won their first game against Wofford, but were eliminated by the North Carolina Tar Heels. But the only SEC team... That's still alive is Kentucky. <laughs> so the Kentucky Wildcats still undefeated, 36-0 on the season. They will host, or they, they will not host, but they will play West Virginia in the Midwest region, Sweet 16, on Thursday at 8.45. So college basketball, you know, hopefully you didn't have Ole Miss going too far in your bracket because they did not make it out of the round of 64. But great season overall for Ole Miss. You know, they, they picked up their fifth win. All time in the NCAA tournament, they're five and eight now, so that's really a good season for Andy Kennedy and company. But that's going to do it for Hotty Toddy Hotline this week for our executive producer John Rawl, and he's uh, he's really busy th- th- this week with all the Dan Jones stuff. But you can still reach him; uh, he's he's on Twitter as as well. If you want to reach out to our producer who makes this show happen, that's. That's John Rawl, and I'm trying to find John's Twitter on oh, my Twitter. My Twitter has been a little slow this week, but it's just at, at John Rawl, J O N R A W L. And well, that, that's it. But it was I was glad to host the show this week. But I'll see you guys next week. But you you've been listening to Hunt Teddy Holly, a production of CRM Sports on the Colonel Ref Radio Network. See y'all next week.